proliferation or potential proliferation of industrial wind farms um, through the Midlands and indeed in our, in our own county of Donegal. There is a, a current proposal as well for a massive farm there that's causing uh, a huge amount of problems. And it also is related to the, to the actual developments that, are taking that have taken place in renewable energy where wind is no longer necessary as the only source of um, renewable energy and it's, <coughs> it's in order to allow alternatives to be developed that uh, I'm asking you to consider placing a moratorium on future developments at the moment. Thank you, Minister. Okay. Uh, thank you, Deputy. Uh, the overarching objective of the government's energy policy is to ensure secure and sustainable supplies of competitively priced energy to all consumers. A well-balanced fuel mix is essential to meeting those objectives for Irish consumers and businesses. Onshore One contributes significant, significantly to achieving those, these objectives. A 2014 Sustainable Energy Authority of Ireland report listed the benefits from one-day electricity generation in 2012. In summary, almost 600 kilotons of oil equivalent of fossil fuels were displaced, valued at 180 million euro, with the consequent carbon dioxide saving of 1.5 million tons valued at 11 million euro. A report published by the Council for European Energy Regulators recently found Ireland to have one of the lowest levels of monetary support per unit of gross electricity produced. In other words, Ireland's approach to subsidising renewable electricity generation is amongst the most cost-effective in the EU. As we transition to a low-carbon economy, we will continue to assess the alternative energy sources, including offshore wind, in the longer term that are available to us. This was acknowledged in the Green Paper on Energy Policy, published in May 2014. Over 1,200 responses to the public consultation were received and 12 public seminars were held to enable public participation in the finalisation of a white paper which will be published in September. It is essential that local communities uh, are at the heart of the transition to a sustainable energy system. The Department is currently finalising a renewable electricity policy and development framework which is to be underpinned by a strategic environmental assessment and an appropriate assessment. The proposed framework will be completed in 2015 and will be a high-level strategic policy which is intended for the guidance of persons seeking development consent, primarily in relation to large-scale renewable electricity projects, as well as for the guidance of planning authorities, statutory authorities and the public. The next stage of public consultation will commence shortly with the publication of the scoping report. This work, along with the review of the existing wind energy guidelines, currently been finalised by the Department of Environment, Community and Local Government, will set a clear fr framework for the development of renewable energy infrastructure into the future. Margadera, Chuck to Thomas Pringle. Well, so you say that we have a, a well-balanced fuel mix in terms of um, our energy supply. I would actually disagree with that. I mean, our total renewable energy focus is on wind and on onshore wind, and that's, that is the problem now. And that may, may have been at the time when the plan was developed in two, back in 2007 or so, wind was probably the only viable technology at that stage but technology has moved on and there's huge potential in terms of biomass and for um, meeting the renewable targets and also huge potential for the creation of industry within rural Ireland which is sustainable which is renewable and which could make Ireland into a leader in terms of producing biomass and delivering it and if you look at the the amount of you say that we have the lowest level of monetary support in the EU but if you look at the planned investment that's uh, anticipated through electricity and spending over 4.2 billion euros in upgrading the uh, electricity infrastructure solely to accommodate industrial wind farms, um, that situation will change very quickly. And you take the 90 million euro a year already that we're subventing um, wind farm op operators by. For a fraction of that investment, we could generate a, a wood biomass um, industry here. Simply by converting Money Point to run off wood biomass would cost about 400 million euros a year, but would meet our Kyoto targets and our CO2 reduction targets in one go. Uh, for a fraction of the cost and that's why we need to really look at this and that's why we need to have a moratorium on wind farms, on la onshore wind farms, to look at this and develop other alternatives. Thank you. Mr. Well, look, uh, I'm certainly on the same uh, page, uh, Deputy, in relation to exploring all uh, potential um, alternatives and certainly a reliance on wind, uh, especially onshore, in terms of sustainability going forward as a single uh, solution is not the is not the way forward. Uh, I agree, biomass. Uh, in fact, 
Uh, I met a company recently who were looking to invest in Donegal and Tidal. Uh, and, and looking, at, looking at the sort of the community approach to it, where it's actually you're getting community buy-in from day one. And to go back to your original question, and you mentioned Donegal, you mentioned the Midlands. I mean, I don't need to speak uh, on behalf of the companies. They know that mistakes were made in terms of even pre-announcements. For example, in the Midlands, companies saying we're going to build 10,000 wind turbines. That puts the communities back up straight away. There was no exploration around, uh, around or conversation around community dividend. Um, there was no conversation around what would be the benefits to the local community. You know and I know uh, in Donegal that one farms contributed about 1.8 million euro per year to the rate base in Donegal County Council. But that doesn't mean that we continue to plough ahead and building what more tur one turbines that's going to affect communities and upset communities. And we have to be very careful, very strategic. And that's why I'm d delighted that, that there is going to be a strategic look, look at this. There's going to be a consultation coming up shortly. There is going to be uh, a more critical appraisal as to how, community, how we meet the community needs as well as uh, the need for industry. But Thank we have to look offshore. You, you know, and when you speak to industry, they say off the west coast of Ireland, oh, it may be too expensive. But we have to look at the west coast, and we have to look at the east coast as well. And within the IRC, there were there were developments uh, by companies there when the, the negotiations were going on on a bilateral basis between the UK and Ireland. Now that's parked up to about 2018, 2020. Uh, that didn't happen, but there still are opportunities for offshore. I certainly Thank you, uh, Minister, I would. I'll be encouraging Minister White to, uh, as part of the. Uh, the, 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 the negotiations and consultations in relation to uh, energy consultation at the minute, that biomass has to be, has to be part of that I mix as well. Back to the Minister, uh, Deputy Pringle. Yes, uh, <coughs> thanks, Minister. But, you know, while all these consultations are going on, and that, uh, the fact still remains that the plans are there to develop 10,000 wind farms in the Midlands, no matter how much you, s you don't say that and try and get community people to communities on board and that they're still facing that prospect and we're still facing the prospect of having to invest 4.2 billion euros in electricity infrastructure simply to facilitate those wind farms and that's the problem because no matter even even if we built them even if the communities accepted them and there was a community dividend that put a few euro into the local community we're still going to carry the cost and the burden of that because that 4.2 billion investment will be passed on to electricity consumers by uh, electricity and the electricity companies and we will still lose and we, will we have far better, more cost-effective options there that can generate uh, sustainable industries in rural Ireland as well, and they make, would make far more sense to be looking at that and developing that, rather than looking at ways to appease communities to get them to accept wind Thank turbines. Thank you. Final reply, Minister. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, you know, you can't go to a community and say this is going to be the way, and you have to accept that. I think, I think the mistakes were, were made on, on the part of, of private industry, but I'm certainly not going to speak on, 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 on behalf of private industry. But the mistakes that were made, we have to learn from them, and we have to bring communities with us, and communities have to be at the heart of the solution. And if we're looking at what you're talking about, rural, sustainable uh, economic models, the communities have to be at the heart of that. And that's why it's important that the Department of Environment and Local Government is going to have uh, a role in this and, and going to have a role in ensuring that the, the proper and thorough uh, processes are adhered to to ensure that uh, we don't have we don't have communities upset. We don't have communities feeling disenfranchised that they're not getting a dividend. Um, and we, we we have to look at, at, at all the alternative uh, uh, potential, be it tidal uh, or be it uh, offshore wind, and your own uh, suggestions around biomass. We have to look at the, the complete mix uh, because, as you know, we're importing 100% of our oil. We're importing 95% uh, of, of our gas, which will change in a few months' time. And we have such a heavy reliance on fossil, but the percentage mix on the 2020 targets for renewables, for uh, renewable energy, we, we have to look at the, 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 whole, the whole picture. And what I've been saying, and I know Minister White's on the same page as me, communities have to be a heart, at the heart of the solution, Thank you. both in terms of uh, ensuring that it's acceptable, communities number one, uh, but also that they actually have, they, they feel that they're part of, of the dividend as Thank well. Thank you. Deputy Michael Moynihan has the next priority question. Yeah, good morning. Uh, to ask the Minister um, his views on